Here's everything you need to know about the Level 1 Google Educator exam for 2023. Hi, my name is John Sowash. I've been helping teachers pass the Google Educator exam since 2016. This is everything you need to know to pass in 2023. Now, the exam format and parameters have remained unchanged. It's still 35 multiple choice questions. There's a three hour time limit and the exam cost is $10. That's a great deal. Three hours is more than enough time. We'll talk more about time management in just a bit. Now, the products covered on the level one test are pretty much what you would expect. These are the core Google Workspace products, things like Gmail, Calendar, Drive, the whole Drive Suite, Docslide Sheets, Google Classroom. Nothing really surprising or unexpected here. The level two test is where you'll find uh, some of those more nuanced tools. But the level one really focuses on the tools that you're going to use every single day. Now, a couple of updates for 2023. There definitely are some new questions that highlight some of the latest features of products like Google Docs, for example, smart chips were introduced about a year ago, year and a half ago. Those have now made their way into the certification test. So you definitely need to know about the latest updates to these Google products. If you're not using some of these features, you'll want to prepare uh, before you take the test. Google Meet has also um, seen a resurgence. There's more questions on Google Meet, some of the newer features, the integrations with Google Classroom, for example. This year, um, Google has all also re-added questions related to Google Drawing uh, onto the exam as well. Um, so if you haven't used Drawing in a while, you'll definitely want to brush up before you take the test. This year, I did not receive any questions on Google Tasks. Sometimes uh, questions are removed. This year, I didn't get any task questions, so uh, something to be aware of. Now, when I say that this exam is multiple choice, it's a little misleading. There are some traditional multiple choice questions, but a lot of them are like this. These are the select all that apply. And while there's only 35 questions, you actually end up making many more selections than that, because in this particular example, you need to select three correct answer choices. Now, this isn't an actual test question. I wrote this just to kind of give you a sense of the style of the questions. So the question here is about Google Classroom. Which of these features will help teachers organize digital resources? And you would select three correct answers. Um, here's a different style of question. Um, this is a draggable question. You will receive some of these as well. Um, so when I say multiple choice, it's a very loose statement. You're making a lot of uh, judgments. And this year, I got a lot of um, comparison questions. So like, what features um, differentiate Google Meet from uh, some, you know, some other web-based tool or uh, slides from Google Keep, stuff like that. So you really have to know about both of these products to answer uh, correctly. The results are instant. You will get immediate feedback that tells you whether or not you pass. The passing score is 80%. You don't get a lot of information about what you got right or wrong on the test. It's kind of like the ACT, SAT test. You get a score, but not really more information. You can take the exam on all the standard operating systems, Chromebooks, Mac, um, and PC. You do need to have a webcam on that device. So if you're on a desktop computer that doesn't have a webcam, it won't allow you to proceed. You cannot take the exam on mobile devices, including iPads. When you pass your exam, you'll get an email that looks like this from GFE certifications at google.com, and it will have your test credentials, your expiration date, and a link to this really nice uh, digital certificate. Now, how do you prepare for this test? You're interested in becoming a Google educator? Well, here are a couple of very concrete steps. First of all, Google does offer a free self-paced online course that is very comprehensive. It will cover everything that you need to know to pass the level one test. The downside to this uh, free self-paced course is it's incredibly boring. <laughs> you are not going to love it. It's a lot of text, a lot of reading. There's no interaction. There's no community. Um, you're just taking it by yourself. Um, it, Google estimates that it's about 15 hours worth of work. If you were to actually watch every video and read everything in there, I would suggest it would probably be quite a bit more uh, than 15 hours. That is available, it is free, and it will work. It's going to prepare you. You just have to stay awake.
Um, another option that I'd love to offer you is I've created a free study guide. I've looked at the free course, I've taken the test, so I know what they're um, asking and what they're looking for. I've created a study guide. It doesn't give you the answers. It just tells you here are the things that you need to be familiar with. This is where you need to spend your time and your energy. And it's broken down by tool. If you like that free study guide, there's a link in the description to this video or just head over to geducator.com. You'll see it right there on the homepage. Now, the number one tip that I have for helping you prepare for the level one test is to study with a friend. The whole point of this, the value of the Google certification is not the badge, it's the community that you build as you're building these skills and preparing for the exam. Uh, that's Lissa right there. Lissa and I worked on our Google certifications years ago. I'm still good friends with Lissa and many others, and that's the value of the certification. It's the people you go through it with. So start a study group at your school. Join a Facebook group. There's quite a few of them. Um, I'll link to a few in the video description where you can connect with the community of educators as you work on your certification test. Now, if you don't have a community or you'd like to join mine, I offer the Google Certification Academy several times a year, usually in the winter and in the summer. You can join me and a group of 30 to 50 teachers from around the world. We have a great time learning about these tools, preparing for the exam. And again, you have my personal guarantee that you're going to pass that test if you go through the Google Certification Academy. Stacy passed, and uh, Lori and Robin are congratulating them. It's, it's a wonderful community. Again, working with others is really the secret um, to getting the most value out of this, uh, this exam. Now, I take the level one exam at least once a year uh, to help me prepare for the Google Certification Academy that I teach um, throughout the year. This is the summary of the last time that I took it. First thing I do is just kind of generally look at what percentage of the questions were related to three key categories. We have the productivity tools, that's Gmail, Google Groups, um, uh, things like that, Doc Slide Sheets. Then what are the communication tools, that's Calendar, Gmail, and Meet. And then the classroom tools, like Google Classroom, Jamboard, uh, Search, things like that. Now you can see from this summary that the bulk, almost half, of the questions I received were related to Google Drive. So if you want to know how to study and prepare, focus on Google Drive and that, that whole family of tools. Again, docs, slides, sheets, forms, uh, things like that. Now these numbers don't add up to 35 because again, you're making multiple uh, selections for each question. So overall, it's more like probably 50 answer selections in those uh, 35 or so questions. Here's a more detailed breakdown of the uh, number of questions that I received for each Google product uh, on the level one test. And you can see some of the variations um, every year as I've taken this. There's really just a couple of noteworthy things to point out. I got a few more questions on Google Sheets this year and some additional questions on um, Google Search. But overall, everything was much very similar to what it was in 2022. So, you know, Gmail was exactly the same. Groups went from two to one. Chrome was the same. Very consistent. A couple of uh, strategies for you if you are preparing to take your test and you're watching this video um, in preparation for that. First, this is a vocabulary test. You need to pay very careful attention to the words, the phrasing of the questions. Make sure you know what is being asked so you can answer correctly. Now, secondly, this is open book. If you're not 100% sure about an answer, you can go and look it up. Um, I've carefully read the terms and conditions for the test. You're welcome to access external notes. The only thing you cannot do is receive help from another person during the exam or utilize actual test material collected by another person. Those are the restrictions. Everything else is, uh, is fair game. Now there's another really helpful thing that I want to make sure that you're aware of. When you're in the test, if you look at the top of the question, it will give you a clue, especially for those multiple choice options. It'll say, please select two, please select three. That will at least tell you how many correct answers are in a given question. 
still have to figure out which ones they are, but at least you know you're looking for three uh, correct answers. Those are my tips for passing the level one certification test. I'd love to work with you through an upcoming Google Certification Academy. You can click up here if you'd like to find an upcoming cohort and learn more about what it's like. And if you're interested in taking the level two test, you can check out my level two review video for 2023 down below.